can't suit us. We are at the Atlanta History Center for the Veterans History Project. Today is March the 31st, 2004. Uh, we are interviewing today Mr. Bowen, Paul Allen Bowen. Mr. Bowen, would you repeat your name and would you give us your date of birth? Paul Allen Bowen, August 1st, 1924. All right, thank you. Um, where were you born and raised? Portal, Georgia. A small that? town down in southeast Georgia. What's closest the closest town it's near? Statesboro is 12 miles away. Mm -hmm. um, tell me something about growing up in South Georgia. Turns out it was a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was a country doctor, and I lived on Bowen Street. In a, on a house on three acres. So I told everybody as we went along that I was born and raised on a farm, all three acres of it. Mm -hmm. Tell me your father's name. Andrew J. Bowen, Andrew MD. Alla Turner Bowen. And your father was a doctor? Yes. Local doctor, house call type doctor that we hear about? Everything they did in those days. He died in 1934. Mm -hmm. So he started what brought him to southeast Georgia was George and Florida Railroad. He was the doctor, the surgeon for the room. Mm -hmm. But they folded in the early 20s and he stayed there to practice medicine. Um, what about going to school? Went to school in Portal, grammar school through high school, mm -hmm. and left there and went to Macon to Mercer University. Um, what year did you graduate from high school? Forty-two, I believe. And when did you, so how long were you at Mercer? Very short time. <laughs> Sounds like it. Because I joined the Marine Corps and... and uh, so you enlisted, you weren't Yes. Ready. Tell me about um, enlisting. Well, it looked like they were going to draft everybody, and I decided I wanted the best, so I went to the Marine Corps. Where did you enlist? From Macon to Atlanta to... That's when, Atlanta, the, when you enlisted? Oh, no, I was in Macon. What happened when you enlisted, when you walked in? Tell me about what you, what you remember of that moment. Well, I remember saying goodbye to Mother and everybody else, because I knew I was going overseas. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went from Macon to Atlanta to... to uh, where, where in Atlanta? Do you remember where you were in Atlanta? The fort's out at East Point. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the fort? Is it Fort Gillum? No. No, that's an army fort. Big, big army base, too. McPherson. And they put us on buses on January the 3rd and sent us to Paris Island, South Carolina. What a wonderful place. Well, tell me about Paris Island. <laughs> it's described as hell. Um, it was not bad for me because I was, one, 18 years old, two, in good shape. I'd been playing basketball and football. So it was easy for me to keep up with these older men and especially those that were not in condition. Mm -hmm. um, were you in barracks? Uh, what was your training like? Not very pleasant. If you've ever seen the pictures of Marine boot camp, they do a lot of screaming and yelling and kicking. Mm -hmm. uh, I only came up for personal attention one time. I fell out with, it was July, had a pith helmet, and I put the emblem in backwards. The gunny sergeant just walked down and crashed in the top of my head with a swagger stick. But uh, then I turned it around. Never did that again? No. Um, so what, what did it feel like when you were going through this training? They kept us so busy till I didn't have time for many reflections. Mm -hmm. It was a very demanding experience. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember anything about your, any other instructors, or did you meet any? A fellow named Tinkle Paul, and I was, if I lived to be 500, I'll never forget him. Spell that last name. T-I-N-K-L-E-P-H-U-G-H, I think. <laughs> but we called him Tinkle Paul. Uh-huh. And he was a mean, mean man. Mm -hmm. And he's the only one I remember. Um, 
Where did you go after Paris Island? Camp Lejeune. Camp Lejeune. In uh, New River, North Carolina. Was that any better than Paris Island? Oh, yes. We were treated like schoolboys there. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been raised in the country. Uh, knew a little about surveying. And so I was put in fire control, which is directing big guns. Mm -hmm. And uh, I owe my life to having been in fire control instead of being a grunt with a rifle. Mm -hmm. um, well, what, what did you learn about that? I mean, is this where you learned about fire control? Tell me something about that. Well, in fire control, you have field artillery pieces. What they call a long time, 21 foot barrel that would lob a shell about 10 or 11 miles. And uh, the, the theory was that one of the way of doing it was to measure a baseline and then with trigonometry point the weapon in the directions that your observer has said the enemy was. Mm -hmm. And with that type of gun, there were not much use in the islands because you couldn't get 11 miles to fire. Mm -hmm. Howitzers were a better weapon. So pretty good in math, were you? Not good in math. They had charts. <laughs> um, so um, where did you, where, where was your first assignment? The assignment started from Paris Island to New River artillery. They attached us to the 2nd Marine Division and sent us to San Diego. You want the sequence of where we went? If you would. Well, we boarded. What's your rank? Big rank of corporal. Okay. All right. Um, I was just what the Marine Corps needed at that time. Young, stupid, and willing. <laughs> so you'll find a lot of those. Mm -hmm. And, and a survivor. As a matter of fact, these, uh, this is the only thing, these are my dog tags that I brought out of the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. I left everything else. <laughs> All right, well, give me the sequence. Well, when we went to San Diego, they began more intensive training. And after about six months there, they sent us to Hawaii. Then we boarded a sh troop transport ships and spent 82 days, which I'll never forget, aboard a ship waiting to go. We, we went to Annie Weetop, sat in the harbor, and, and waited to go to Saipan and Tinian. When is this? What year are we talking this about? This is 44. 44, and what time of the year? It's always summer out there. Always summer. It's <laughs> uh, always hot. So. That's right. It's always hot. Not terribly unpleasant. So, so hot of 44. Yes. Okay. And from Tinian, we went over to Saipan. And from Saipan, we were sent back to Hawaii for further training, getting ready for Okinawa. And from Okinawa, we were sent back to Hawaii. And then they dropped the big bomb in August, and we st instead of going to show it, Hawaii, I need to describe Okinawa a little more. We will. Uh, from, from Okinawa, we went to Japan, and that was December, and by the way, it was cold, and there was ice <laughs> and everything else mm -hmm. on Kyushu. And uh, from Saipan, a little town called Sasebo, which was their equivalent to the naval station. Uh, we were shipped back to the west coast and I believe it was trains and not bus mm -hmm. back to New River, North Carolina, where we were discharged. Um, the 82 days on the boat. Terrible. Describe the boat. Well, it was an L. Do you know the name of the boat? No. Okay. Um, we were four or five deep in racks. It was, I believe it was called a Liberty boat. It was APA, assault personnel, was the classification of the boat. And it had, I think, part of two divisions on it. Uh, 
we didn't run out of food, but we never had very good food or very much of it. And we would have charged anything to get off that boat. What was the day like? What, what ha happened during a day's time? Training. What kind of training? Exercising. Uh, looking at topographical maps of where we were going. Planning strategy. Uh, once they got you out of the port and away from the gee dunk stands, they just continued to pile on. Mm -hmm. and we felt that we knew where we were going very well. Was there any relaxation time? To let off steam, we had jousting matches and boxing matches. And, uh, that didn't have any entertainment, no social directors. <laughs> <laughs> um, Letters from home, letters to home. Got some letters in, uh, in Okinawa. My mother was very, very good about writing, and Ruth, who was to be my wife, wrote every day. Mm -hmm. So I uh, usually heard my name at mail call. Um, well, tell, let's go back and tell me about Ruth a little bit. When did you all meet? We met when she was transferred to, to New River. She. Uh, was an interesting woman. What was Ruth's, what's Ruth's maiden name? Ruth McCarson. Right. And I have her dog tag, too. Mm -hmm. um, she was interesting. She was married, not married, I'm sorry. Um, she was raised in an orphanage over in Batesville, Arkansas, and with a lot of other Okies and Arkies, migrated to Southern California. And she was working in a shipyard as an electrical expediter. And uh, she left to brag about having 150 brothers and sisters. And they came by recruiting to the shipyard, and she joined up. She was one of the very early Marines. And, uh, so a female Marine. Well, yeah, of course yeah. Marines. And don't dare call them anything but female Marines. <laughs> But, uh, so as a Marine, then she is transferred to... She transferred back to San Diego, mm -hmm. and uh, she stayed there during the war. She was a uh, office clerk typist and all that sort of thing. And, uh, and wrote you from the office every day. That's right. Did you write her back? Once in a while. <laughs> she was too lovely to get away, so I stayed in contact with her. Uh -huh. and, uh, we had five or six months together. Incidentally, I made corporal two or three times, or it was PFC, I've forgotten, because I was bad to go over the hill and spend a little time with her. <laughs> she appreciated it. Well, yeah. She... Uh, um, and you mentioned that you wanted to talk some more about Okinawa. Yeah, we um, talk about Okinawa. Okinawa was getting close to Japan's homeland. And I, at that time, I was in 5th Amphibious Corps, 2nd Marine Division. And we were elected to, on April the 1st of that year, we were elected to make a faint attack up to the shore. That's when I gained new respect for the Coast Guard. Because when the smoke screen lifted, there between us, and we were hunkered down in LCVP landing craft. And uh, in front of us were these Coast Guard boys wearing t shirts, no helmets, and no flag gear. But at any rate, we ran up to the, share, to the shore with the hopes of bringing the Japs down to that end of the island, while the 4th Marine Division attacked them from the middle and the 10th Army. So then we went back aboard ship, and that's when the kamikaze started. The Japanese could fly from their home base to the islands and dive into our ships. And the Navy and Marine Corps lost something like 30 ships in that battle. That was a big loss. And, and you were on shore watching this happen? No. Oh, you were on the boat? Yeah. We ran so far trying to get away from the kamikazes and ran into a storm. We were right over near China, 
And from there we went back to, uh, we were not necessary. Second Marine Division did not go ashore en masse. Uh, we were floating reserve and started training for Japan. Well, um, uh, so, you're, so you're on the boat to avoid the kamikazes. You head towards China uh, right. during a storm. Yes. What kind of, uh, typhoon? Typhoon. What was that like? Not any fun at all. The ship listing and turning as much as 20, 25 degrees. How long, how many days were you in the typhoon? Two days. They don't, they don't last long. Were you seasick? Never been seasick. Been, been, been air sick. Okay. But uh, my brother used to take me out and go up and down until I throw up. <laughs> but I didn't get seasick. Oh, no. Well, what's it like being on a boat in a typhoon? No fun. Uh, Do you, are you tied down? Do you just no. hold on? Um, Mostly you stay in your bed if you're a troop. You sure don't get up and walk around the decks. Mm -hmm. So you're out of the typhoon and then you're headed where? Back to Japan. I mean, back to Hawaii. Back to Hawaii. To the big island to drain, train. Um, how long were you? You were in Hawaii several times. For yes, you. yeah. That was where we'd come back to regroup and fill in replacements. Mm -hmm. um, did you get to see your girlfriend when you were in Hawaii? No. People didn't casually go out and fly from Hawaii to San Diego. And that's the extent of my Marine Corps experience, except I... Well, the action, did you, what, did you see any action? Um, or I saw action at a great distance. I did not personally fire and angry at anybody. Uh, I did inherit this voice on the island of Tinian. Uh, we had secured the island, but uh, the Japanese still had some island nearby, and they flew little bombers over. One night, some idiot had parked a tank right at the end of the row of huts, and I ran full speed into it and messed up my nose and sinus. Mm. That's the extent of my injury. Mm -hmm. But, uh, How did they treat the injury? Did you? We didn't, you we didn't have a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It didn't straighten my nose up ever. Mm -hmm. um, when you were um, on the boats um, and you said you saw um, action sort of from afar. Right. Um, did you have a job on the boats? Were you no. manning the gun or helping no. them figure anything out? No. Mm -hmm. they had the, these boats were crewed by uh, not the Coast Guard, merchant, merchant Marines, and had a contingent of Navy on there to fire the, all they had was 40 millimeter pom-poms. Mm -hmm. We were pretty nearly defensive in the water. Of course, we traveled with escort. Mm -hmm. And uh, one trip, the trip back from Hawaii to begin training for Okinawa, uh, we came back on an LCVP, a land, um, converted aircraft carrier. And we all thought we'd died and gone to heaven because they had ice cream and dry beds and all that sort of thing. That was, and they allowed us to shoot skeet off the fantail. That was a pleasure trip. Um, what sort of things did you have with you on the boat? A uniform and a rifle. We hardly ever went anywhere without our rifles. Mm -hmm. But um, as for personal possessions, mm -hmm. no. No? Just your dog tags that you brought back? Dog tags. I, brought, I lived to bring them home. That was everybody's ambition, okay. to bring them home. Mm -hmm. um, were there any um, men that you made friends with on oh, the boat that you've kept up with, or? No. no. Uh, we had heavy losses on Saipan, and uh, they transferred you according to where you were needed with your specialty frequently. And uh, 
as for foxhole buddies, I think that's greatly exa uh, exaggerated. We intentionally, I intentionally, I remember one guy, a fellow named Delapino, who was a Mormon from uh, Salt Lake City or someplace out there. And um, we had half a tent called a pup tent, and he had the other half. We uh, talked about family and friend, but never really buddied up because either that's my nature or that's the way it was in the Marine Corps, but a lot of people didn't have buddy buddies. So would each of you carry one half of the tent and then you mm -hmm. came together to yeah. put the tent up? and tried to stay dry because mm -hmm. it does rain in the South Pacific. Mm -hmm. um, you said that uh, when you were on the boat that there was, you never ran out of food, but there really wasn't a lot. How did, how were you supplied? How did you feel about the supplies? Was there anything the, that you were lacking? No. Mm -hmm. uh, we always had something to eat. It was not, it had a lot of I hated fruit cocktail for years. That was the only sweet thing we ever got, and I love sweets. A um, lot of spam, a lot of uh, mutton from Australia, uh, a lot of spam, which I still don't like. <laughs> um, did you have any leave time? When I was discharged, oh, after discharge. oh, oh no, not in Hawaii. Um, we were on the Big Island, Hawaii, mm -hmm. and um, training all the time. Mm -hmm. He might have had a, when we first went over, we had, I think, a day or two before they formed up a unit. Mm -hmm. But um, I've been back to Hawaii to, to see it though. <clears throat> Um, where were you when the war ended? When the war ended, I was in Hawaii. How did you hear about the end of the war? By radio. What was everybody's it, reaction? What did you do? Jubilant. Well, I, I didn't do anything special. I just said, thank God we don't have to go into Japan, because we were already beginning to look at the topography of it, and I think to say a million people would have died is a gross understatement. I think there would have been hell on wheels. And every once in a while I say thank you, Harry Truman. Um, when you were in the midst of uh, your service, did you have a sense that you were making history, that you were part of any heroics? Um, how, what did you, what was sort of your feelings about My objective what you did was, and did you, you know, at the time, compared to maybe how you look back on it now? I had the same feeling I have now, I had then, was, Lord, let me make it through this day. And um, at 18, 19, I was not very philosophical. Most people aren't. They're just. I said, you know, I'm going to live to take these no tags back to, to Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, do you recall where the day that your service ended? Yes. What, do you know what day that was? <clears throat> or what year? That was 1946, and I think it was the 16th of January. Mm -hmm. And interesting enough, my wife was discharged the same day, but on the West Coast. And um, they had brought two loads, train loads, I think, of people into New River to be discharged. And there was this bright young second lieutenant. We were queued up, and he'd say, you want to be an active or inactive reserve? And I said, neither. He says, you got to be in one, and I says, the hell you say, I don't have to be in either one because I'm not a Marine Corps Reserve. I'm a regular Marine, and I volunteered, and I volunteer out. Everybody else that I know got called back. 
because they of that. But they made a big distinction to him, and fortunately to him, that um, the Marine Corps had the right to recall me. And I said, I did not join the Marine Corps Reserve, I'm USMC. And I had to show him my dog tags. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, all those boys got called back to Korea, and a lot of them didn't make it. The artillery guys in Kashun, and a lot of them froze up and were killed. So I've been very fortunate. Um, did you go back to school yes. on the GI Bill? Yes. Where did you go to school? Tell us about that. I went to school in Mercer University. And we were <coughs> one of the first old couples on the campus. My wife worked for the VA on the outside. We lived in a little housing developed for students. And so it was when did beautiful. you get married? About January the... Set twenty seventh. Okay. Not long, forty four. Four. Yeah. Okay. And um, lived in the housing project, basically. And left there and came to Atlanta and what went to pharmacy school. What year? I've been 46. No, no, I graduated from MRSA in, uh, I don't remember what month, but it would have been 47 or 48 okay. when I graduated. And then then, I, went, school, then um, I went to pharmacy school, school in, in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And from there, I went to work for a company called Squibb, stayed with them 33 years, and I'm retired. Mm -hmm. And I think that's about all I can tell you. Well, now you had some children. <laughs> you, want, you, children. you want them? <laughs> <laughs> I have two. I have two boys. One, one of them is named Paul Allen Bowen II, and the other one is named Jeffrey Turner Bowen. Jeffrey is not married. Is married, I've forgotten has been married for nine years. Alan has been married for 25 years and has the three children. Mm -hmm. And their names are Jason, Carson, and Savannah. Two boys and a girl. Two boys and a girl. And, uh, are your been, sons in Atlanta? One of them lives in Atlanta. The other one is, lives in uh, Irmo, South Carolina, which is a suburb of Columbia. And they seem to be getting along well. Mm -hmm. um, and you said that uh, your wife died a few years ago? She died in 95. You have a picture of her. Do you want to show it off? Yes, would love to. Mm -hmm. And tell us her name? Ruth McCarson Bowen. Mm -hmm. And how long were you all married? 49 and a half years. Oh, my God. That is just wonderful. Um, uh, did you, have you joined any veterans organizations, or did you do anything like that afterwards? No. Mm -hmm. I says, if I can take these dog tags home, I'll be through with the Marine Corps. <laughs> um, is there anything that you want to add on the tape about um, I think I've talked too much already. Oh, well, I've enjoyed the conversation. Well, if you're there, kind. If there's nothing to add. There's nothing to add. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank I'll you. Push the button and we'll stop.